Welcome back everyone to another episode of We Sail. We are about to share with you one of the scariest moments we've ever experienced aboard our floating home. In last week's episode, we moved anchorages in anticipation for some stronger winds predicted to come our way. But little did we know how intense everything was about to get. So sit back, relax, at least for now, and enjoy the ride. Goodness, what a beautiful morning. It is so clear. I think I gotta get in. The ocean still ceases to amaze me, even after nearly five years of living on the water. The dynamic nature of the constant ebb and flow of the world's biggest body of water is pretty astounding. At times, the ocean can be tranquil and so calm, it's as if the world seemed to hold its breath. We woke to a glassy lake-like lagoon, out here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean at that. Not even a single ripple existed inside the lagoon, creating a mirror, a quiet peace that could only exist miles from anything. Again, done a fantastic job at uh, destroying the boat. <laughs> it uh, is tough running these wires because you have to go from the tight engine compartments through the even tighter little passageways under the floor. Uh, this one goes behind the fridge, so I took out the fridge to get access to all of these cables that run up to the nav station because that's where the controls for the motors are. And while I had the fridge out, I also replaced the broken thermostat it had with a digital one. I've done that on all the fridges, the other two fridges. So it's a complex job with a lot of moving parts, but um, I mean, there's wires everywhere right now. <laughs> it's a mess, but I'm getting there. I'm moving. Is that no go or go? <laughs> no. No go. Yes? No, I'm not joking. You can't go. I'm still trying to set up this damn camera. All right, you may go. No, you can do it. There you go. It's gonna get kind of tight. You're gonna have to really pull. There we go. Okay, right there. Thank you. What do I do? You might as well stay for a second. Well, you never know what you're gonna get out here. Get out here! Get out here. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get out, out here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday we had the most beautiful, calm, perfect day, and now look at it. Oh my gosh! It is mind blowing to me that what we were experiencing for about two days of like lake glassy flat water 
is now this. This is crazy. So, at least not forget, we're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean still. <laughs> yeah. My God, that one just struck right there. Bouncing now. We're not going anywhere. Oh. 
53. This is serious. How are we hanging? On the wood bed? On the anchor? We haven't moved. 52. I know, I know, but the, look at the, oh my god. Oh my god. Look at the cracker, they are just pitch in hard. It is seriously as if we're in the middle of the ocean right now. I mean it is, technically we are, and we're only surrounded by a little atoll with the reef and the palm trees. Oh my god! How is this like lasting this long? Wow! This is so wild right now. I, uh, wow. Technically, we have gone past a gale, past a strong gale, and are now in a storm. Severe storm. It's force 10 on the Beaufort scale. Really? And it only goes to force 12. What? Yep. We're in a storm. After force, a force 11 is a violent storm, and a force 12 is a hurricane. This is going to blow your mind, but we're only 10 miles an hour, 10 knots of wind speed away from a hurricane. This is the reason we came all the way down to the east side of this atoll to be the most protected from these standing waves like this. Um, if we were back in Macamo Town or any other part of the anchorage of this atoll or lagoon, oh my god, I can't even imagine what all the waves would be feeling like. If we're feeling this right now, oh my god. And we're at the end of the east side of Macamo. I can't imagine anywhere else right now. Have we got an issue? Oh yeah. I mean, it is really, really coming in. Whoa! That's a lot of water. Get the top part, honey. I can see it from here. Right. Oh my gosh. I mean, it is really, really leaking badly. I know exactly what I'll be doing. When it's not? Yeah, not today. <laughs> it is just really coming in. Much water. There's so much water. Look at this. I don't understand the water on the other side. I don't either. Well, the winds have calmed down, but the lightning is back. So that's fun. All right, thanks Animal Cracker. If anybody out there is listening and they actually have a weather uh, briefing, we would love to hear it. See battle break. Go ahead, thank you. Uh, yeah, my satellite came up for moments. Uh, it looked like the, the biggest part of the cell was just to the south of this island. So, uh, although, yeah, we clocked something close to 52, the, the biggest part of the cell was to the south of us. Uh, it looked like we've got maybe another hour and a half of this before we start getting a little bit of a break. Uh, but uh, it looks like we may have more of it coming uh, this afternoon. Over. Is that right? Okay, well, good information. Um, with the way we were all been swinging, we figured that there was, the mass of the storm was to the south of us. So yeah, that coincides with what we're experiencing here on the ground. Let us know if anything else comes up, and I guess we'll just hold tight. And if there, anybody needs any help, of course, get on the net. Yeah, that, uh, I'm about, what, half a mile south of you, so I'm a little closer, or excuse me, uh, west of you. I'm, the lighting's a little closer to me than it is to you, so, oh, yeah, we're a little uncomfortable as well. Yeah, we just saw that one hit. I'm sure you are. We're, uh, yeah, we're all sitting a little precarious right now, so uh, good luck to everyone out there, and uh, keep us posted. Thank you. 
shitty fuck. This is absolutely the biggest storm that we've been in. Yeah. As far as wind strength and duration. duration. We've been in some pretty big storms, but this one takes the cake. I'm so, so, so glad that we're at anchor and not sailing. And it just makes it really difficult because there's nothing around us that's taller in an electrical storm like this. No, I know. It's terrifying. It would be nice to be tucked into some big bay. Like a mountain. <laughs> yeah, a mountain <laughs> around nearby. us. I mean, all of this boats in here are taller than any of these palm trees around oh, yeah. us. Yep. Big lightning yeah, rods. Yeah. We got a wall, so it might be time to go out and start messing with snubbers. <laughs> Va here, um, we also have 5 eighths spare line if anyone should need that. It's the second sun. We've got plenty of spare line and we'll just make ourselves a new uh, bridle, but uh, we don't know if we still have a chain hook. Ask anybody if they want to go to the beach tonight. No, not yet. Looking too soon? Too soon. Uh, second sun, uh, rolling hitch uh, works really well. Also, I've had rolling hitches through really strong winds and um, yeah, they work just as well. Well, we've been up since 5.30. It's now 8.20. It's been a hell of a morning. You guys see for wind, uh, that lightning strike took out our wind instrument completely now. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Uh, Ba here, we have 16 at the moment. It's died down considerably, but we did record a 52. Oh no. All right, yeah, that was right when I was messing with the snubber the first time. Was, I had ski goggles on and uh, it was stinging pretty bad while, while I was messing around with the snubber. Yeah, I had to go up top twice and it was quite nasty. You're but yeah, we're just now going to have some breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's calm enough to have a break. This was like completely stupid. We had one of our cushions blow away and Warren wanted to drop the dinghy and go recover it. And then he flipped the dinghy. And I don't know if he has the engine going or not. He's got the dinghy flipped back over, but he's just drifting away now. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I've got everyone on the radio with me right now. There's another boat that's further down in the anchorage that's going to keep an eye on him, but I just don't know what to do right now. I cannot leave this boat. Erica, did he take a handheld with him? No, I have the handheld with me. This was so stupid. You see the catamaran back there has eyes on him, so hopefully um, they can assist. I hope so. Oh my god. I think he'll like it.
I just, that was really silly. <laughs> oh my God. That was really, really silly. I can't even see him right now. Oh my god, this was so stupid. So I had Cracker, who's behind us, see if he can see, if they can see Warren, and they can. Um, he appears to be drifting directly in line with another boat called Sea Bella, and he's got a paddle, and he's just trying to do his best to stay and get close to them so they can recover him. Um, that was, it's, I'm just so stupid. Just, it's just a cushion. <laughs> just a cushion. One of my worst nightmares felt like it was upon us. When we realized our cushions had blown away, we acted hastily without really thinking things through. I believe I speak for the both of us when we both thought we could drop the dinghy and recover the cushion quickly. A man overboard drill which actually turned into a real one. When I first saw Warren had flipped the dinghy, my mind was racing. Racing with so much fear. Was he okay? Did he get knocked out by the flip? Was he hit by the prop? All very serious and plausible thoughts, and I simply couldn't do anything to help him. I was helpless. Having to stay aboard Va and just watch and wait. Looks like he's lying right up in front of Sibella. Looks like he's lined up perfectly. After nearly five years aboard, we have been through some rather scary moments. But this one was one of the most terrifying days on the water to date. Well, Warren just called on the radio, so it sounds like he's okay. A little shaken, I'm sure. Um, I just, I can't imagine, like, the struggle to fight to get to those boats because he had to paddle. I don't know what happened. I mean, he flipped the dinghy. So I have no idea if, like, our motor is done. <laughs> but, yeah. So he's going to hang tight on Sibella until this literally blows over. For now, I'm just by myself on Va. And it's still blowing like 30, 40 knots of wind. Ugh, stupid. <laughs> so stupid sometimes. Now we know not to mess around with Mother Nature. It has been non-stop blowing 30, 40, 50 knots all fucking day. Like, I mean, really? Man, I also, I 
know the boat's fine, but I don't like being on the boat in these conditions by myself. And there's no way Warren can be here right now. There's, I mean, it's just, it's unsafe. I just can't believe how much it's blowing consistently, like sustained 40 knots of wind, 50, right now. Honda oh. fitting, uh, so that he can get some fuel or alcohol into this motor. So if anybody listening has a Honda outboard and they have an extra connection or hose, or he's probably gonna need to borrow a tank to get some fuel into this thing. Mai Tai, I have a uh, Honda, um, and I can lend you my hose to get it going if you want. Great. All right. Well, you know, we needed uh, Denton Special Forces dinghy ability to come back and uh, help tow us up. Yeah, I was going to see if he wanted me to come grab him and uh, get him back on his boat so uh, America doesn't have to be alone. <laughs> uh, we were contemplating waiting for the wind to die down. Uh, into the uh, minimum the teens. Yep. So we're just in standby mode. And we're we're sitting here chatting. We need a fourth for uh, for hearts if anybody wants to float down. <laughs> you promised to catch us <laughs> <laughs> for a card game. Once. Well, it sounds like they're doing okay down there. I'm just all by my lonesome, I'm missing my husband. Wind, can you please stop? <laughs> Winds seem to be easing up, which is lovely. It's a bit of a relief, and I think Warren is going to be towed back here shortly. Um, we still have some daylight, so that'd be good if he can get back to the boat before this turns up again, if it does, or if it comes dark. Yeah. If, uh, my dinghy we had about 18 inches with the water in it, and I bailed it all out. I don't think any water could have migrated up into the fuel tank, but just in case something were to happen, I just want to make sure there's another thing in the water over. Well, it's still blowing about 25 knots, but they are making an attempt to come now. Um, the sailing community once again saves the day. Uh, everyone really steps up and helps us out, and as we would do the same for somebody else in these situations, but it's always so such a relief to, to have that kind of community uh, have your back and help you out. Um, yeah, things could have been really bad. Things could have been very scary. They were very scary. I'm glad he's okay. Um, we just need to be smarter about certain situations like this. So he's on his way back. I can see them. They're going slow, but they're coming back. And we have a whole team on deck, like, ready to assist if anything were to happen, especially, who knows, like, if it gusts up to 35 again. So, yeah, he's on his way home. Thank you all for joining us on this incredible journey today. I am truly relieved that Wharton is safe and back on board. As we took a moment to debrief our near disaster experience, it was important for us to reflect on the valuable lesson we had learned. This harrowing incident reminded us of the unpredictable nature of life and the importance of being prepared for any situation. It's crucial for us to remain calm, think on our feet, and work together as a team when we're faced with adversity. We both are grateful for the opportunity to share this story with you, and we hope it serves as a reminder to prioritize safety and vigilance in any adventure. Remember, every experience, even the close calls, can teach us something profound. So stay safe out there, and until next time, keep exploring and learning from every step of your journey. And a massive thank you goes out to everyone in the Anchorage who assisted in safely recovering Warren. Without you guys, I don't know what I would have done.
that was freaking nuts and such a such a bummer so bummed and I really just want to have a drink and just relax and but this thing has to get cleaned out because there's now salt water inside the motor so whatever it takes to at least just get it flushed tonight which means taking this thing halfway mostly apart really which oddly and unfortunately I'm getting pretty versed at lately I know you work very mechanically like a motor, but do you want to tell me what was going on in your mind out there when it happened? I can't believe how fast I ended up in the water with it flipped like that. It was freaking nuts how quick it happened. I mean, I know that the storm was huge and I know it was just a cushion, but no way did I ever think that just the wind would flip it upside down. That's, I never thought that. Yeah. How many tries was it to get you to flip the dinghy back? I think only two. Um, the hard thing was that I had to untie the painter and then go underwater and tie it up to the handle, which was under the water, and then put it on top of the dinghy and then get back on top of the dinghy. That was difficult. The other thing that was really difficult is the bottom of the dinghy is completely has a little bit of just a layer of moss or something on it growth and it's just slick as a ice skating rink and so getting my feet on it and flipping it over was damn near impossible and the motor was still going at that point? no 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 it only ran but the thing is is as everything flipped upside down. I was in the water, but the propeller was out of the water. So I was never close to the propeller. It was never a safety issue with the propeller. I went down and it went up, you know, and by the time I got up on the motor, it, it only ran for just a few moments while it was upside down. It only takes a second to pull in enough water to clog the motor and stop it. So the first thing is pulling out the two spark plugs so that we can drain the water that's in the cylinders. That's the very first thing. And right, right away it's like just flooded with seawater. And when I turn it over, spray it over. <gasps> yep, that's all seawater. Thank you everyone for joining us this week. Be sure to join in again next Wednesday as Warren hustles to repair our outboard motor before our friends arrive for two weeks in the remote islands of the Tuamotus. You guys comfy back there? Oh yeah. All right. So good. So ready. <laughs> Let's I'm do this. I'm so excited. Another special thank you goes out to our patrons. These videos are made possible by you. Thank you for your support and motivation to keep the creative content flowing. Consider being our Patreon today and join the adventures of we every Wednesday. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>